Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to paint a lemon rust battle tank using Mechanic Aesthetic Grey as the primary colour. In this video I'll show you how to paint the tank, weather the paintwork, paint the tracks, paint the details and accessories, and of course apply the transfers or decals. If you want to see how to actually make the, the tank itself, I've got a link which I'll share below uh, for details on how to do that. Right, so the first place to start with is actually the, uh, the tracks. I spray the tracks with Chaos Black Spray whilst it's still within the frame. Um, you can see now I've gone with, through with Lead Belcher to pick out the actual physical metal tracks. And I'm carefully leaving uh, the black rubber pads or road pads to be touched up later with Coavis Black. The reason why I paint them like this is I find it much easier to do that you stick them onto the tank and trying to paint them individually that way. I find this method much, much easier. Of course then, once you've done with that, uh, applying the lead belcher and touching up the uh, rubber pads, uh, do go through with Nolan Oil to give it that nice watch. Just to note, uh, the two longest pieces, uh, which actually will sit at the bottom of the tank, you could just leave them as is. Um, I just do lead belcher all over them and don't even bother washing them because remember, they'll be facing towards the table and no one's going to be seeing them unless they pick up the tank itself. Right, so now spraying the tank with Mechanic Aesthetic Grey from uh, Games Workshop. You can see here I'm doing short sweeping uh, motions, hitting all angles of the tank. Um, I guess when painting any model, particularly those with flat surfaces like this, just think of it how some would paint a car uh, when the car's getting a paint job. Lots of short sweeping strokes, actually letting them dry in between. When it comes to holding the tank, you can see I've shoved my left uh, finger into the hole where the turret goes. You could stick it onto a piece of board the entire tank with some blue tack, um, but I find this method not too bad. Um, do of course let it dry once you've uh, sprayed one layer, fully dried after about 15 or 20 minutes, pick it up again holding different areas and spray the tank once again. So make sure you go through again short sweeping motions, shaking the can at regular intervals in between your bursts. And you can see I've actually removed the sponsored weapons and also the turret. For the turret, basically, I actually stick it onto a pot of old paint and use it as a way to hold it. And you can see there. Right, so with the paint fully dried, I recommend waiting at least a good hour before you start to uh, handle the model. It's now time to move on to the actual detail work. I did stick on some fuel jerrys, which are some accessories which come from the Basilisk kit. I think you can also buy um, an accessory frame from Games Workshop as well. Um, individually, I think it's about 10 quid. Um, but again, I like to paint the fewer jerrys individually. Right, so the first part of actually bringing the model to life will be dry brushing. Uh, do take your largest, most unlucky brush and actually use our Dawnstone here to go through and basically bring out all of the edges of the model. Um, this will take time. Make sure you do truly dry brush it. Don't be impatient and put on big blabs of paint. Make sure you thoroughly dry the brush before applying. Probably will have to also do this several times on each area um, because it is quite a subtle effect. It does take time. Um, and I've actually purposely chosen Dawnstone because um, it's quite similar um, in shade to Mechanica Standard Grey, but also then unique enough that it uh, will stand out. So go all over the entire tank, dry brushing uh, on the different areas. I recommend just focusing on one area at a time to keep track of where you're at. But remember, this will take a bit of time, so do go through and go over the sort of work you've done already to make sure each of the areas uh, looks nice and highlighted. Cool, so with the uh, dry brushing done, you can see there, uh, it is quite subtle, but it does help to bring out the edges of the tank. Um, so now it's time to give the model a bit of depth. So what I'm using here is Agrat's Earthshade. Um, and basically, I'm going through with a medium brush and picking out all of the little recesses, nuts and bolts and screws that you can see across the entire tank. There are a lot. This will take time. Um, and the reason why it takes time is because you don't just get a great big shape brush and slap it on, but you individually pick out each of the, each of the little parts and uh, recesses. So basically, I'll let this part run uh, for a little while to show you the, the areas I work on. Um, because I think it is quite important that you do this carefully. Because uh, as I said, you can't just go and pour all, all the uh, wash over the model. You've got to individually pick out each of the rivets, the bolts, that little emergency hatch there. 
I'll pick out eventually as well. And with your, uh, your detail brush, you actually put down where exactly you want the wash to go. So I'll let this part run um, and let you see how I basically go through and pick at all of the detail on the left side of the model here.
Right, so just uh, on this work again, I'll let this part run as well for the turret. Um, again, because where you place the actual wash is quite important. I actually drop down to um, a more detailed brush here to individually pick out uh, the bolts because I was finding that the previous brush I was using was too, a bit too big for the task. So again, I'll let this run. I'll let you see how I basically pick out all of the, the different recesses and raised areas um, on the turret itself. So I'll let this part run for you to, to follow. Right, yeah, so with uh, the washing done using the Agrets Earthshade, putting it on all the nooks and crannies and crevices and nuts and bolts, you actually have to re-dry brush with our uh, Dawnstone once again. The reason for this is you want to make sure that actually the wash, you know, the shade, is firmly in the background of the model, if that makes sense. So I'm really focusing here on the side of the engine bay, where I think the wash probably stands out a bit too much, uh, particularly down in that sort of like uh, cavity area. So I'm going through with a heavy most unlucky brush and heavily dry brushing to push it back into the, the, the background. Cool, so on to uh, now weathering the tank. Basically I showed those bits of foam before because they're going to play a key role in helping you to, uh, to make the model look a bit weathered. You can use um, any sort of sponge or foam. I actually get that from um, some storage cases I've got. You could just use a, a dry, clean kitchen sponge. So now using Abbott on black. What I've done is obviously dabbed in one of the sponges into the pot of paint and actually off camera what I'm doing is making it as dry as possible or making it quite dry um, on a bit of kitchen paper. Now what I do is I imagine where I believe the tank is going to be most weathered. So the, the favourite pl place I always start actually is the back of the tank because I think actually here this is how the crew would get in and out of the commander's hatch. So that's where I sort of picture that the lads, the crew placing their feet, putting their hands, and basically over time damaging the paintwork to get into the tank itself. So this is really, really good fun, actually. Um, do sort of make up your own story here. Obviously, I've chosen mine to be the back of the tank where the, the commander and the rest of the crew sort of get in and out. Um, I obviously focus a lot on the, the handles there uh, to sort of show that um, that's obviously had a bit of paint removed. Um, and of course... Go around the front of the tank as well, heavily pick out, I guess, the, the front of the tank, particularly around the, the driver's area, because um, you can imagine it's bounced with quite a few obstacles and um, maybe some trees and the like. So go around with a sponge and basically quickly and carefully dab on where you believe the tank would be uh, worn through. So next is actually doing the same thing, but now with lead belcher. And the reason why you're using this is on the areas you've done in black, you're going to gently place on lead belcher. So what this represents is almost like uh, the paint's been removed down to the actual uh, the metal of the frame itself of the actual tank. So imagine if when you see a car which has been had a bit of a bad crash, you can see the actual metal work of uh, the vehicle. That's so what we're doing here. So all the areas which I've put the black on, I very gently and only a little bit just dab on a little bit of lead belcher to sort of show again that the uh, paintwork has been degraded all the way down to the actual metal of the tank itself. Right, so believe it or not, but that actually was the completion of the weathering stage. So really straightforward and um, quite a lot of fun, I hope you agree. Now I actually move back onto the, the tracks. And I think the key point here is basically I remove them all from the frame and follow the instructions. I basically lay them out as I, as I am there, exactly how they're meant to be put on the tank. Um, this makes it a lot easier because once you get the glue out, you do want to make sure you've got everything in hand and in the right place to save you time making costly mistakes. So obviously then you glue uh, the tracks in place, 
um, as I said, make sure you follow um, the layout of the tracks and also, also the instructions because they do have specific places where they are meant to go. Um, I have in the past got them wrong and basically caused myself a real headache. Um, so again, go through, follow the instructions uh, and make sure you lay out uh, the tracks with your cement glue in the right places. Cool, so with the tracks on, I hope they engraved something to look uh, pretty good. Uh, so next is you pick out the first of the, uh, the real detail. And basically I use um, Hashat Copper to paint all of the uh, Imperial Eagles, which you'll see on the engine grill, on top of the actual turret itself, and also uh, there's a skull with a reef on the back of the toolbox. Key point here is um, I'd encourage you to make sure you don't actually get any paint onto the, the um, Mechanicus standard grey. Reason for that is you can of course touch it up with a pot of paint, but I think given that you've just sprayed the tank, I think achieving the similar finish to a sprayed on paint, use it with um, a pot of paint is quite challenging. So do try and be very careful here, picking out the other uh, detail using the copper, uh, using obviously a medium brush to start, and then finishing off the detail with your fine detail brush as well. Right, then we're lead belcher, uh, paint the exhaust pipes on both sides. Again, being very, very careful not to get it onto the uh, Mechanicus Grey where possible. The engine grill, both where I'm painting there, and also you'll see there's a little rectangle thing you would have glued on just beneath it. Paint those with lead belcher. And don't forget, of course, as well, with the smoke grenade launchers, seems to be some sort of uh, instrumentation or maybe some more metallic pieces on top there. So use a detail brush to paint those parts. Right, so with the main weapon itself, if you've gone with a battle cannon or vanquisher battle cannon, you won't have to do any sort of real detailed work here, because in the previous uh, steps you would have just simply weathered the paint. If, however, you've gone for something like the uh, Punisher Gatling cannon, uh, or maybe an exterminated auto cannon, what I've done is made my own annihilator with two uh, last cannons, which I will post a video on later, uh, you will have to go through and give them the relevant paint skin. Right, so for all the metallic parts painted, it's back to a good old friend, Newland Oil Shade, to give the metallic parts a bit more depth. So using your shade brush, carefully go over all the engine grills, uh, the emblems, and also the exhaust pipes to give it a bit more depth. Just like before, try to keep the, uh, the oil, the Newland Oil, off the actual grey. Um, if need be, wipe it off with your finger, or maybe a bit of cloth, because um, you do want to just uh, keep the grey looking quite clean and pure. So something I forgot to mention is uh, for this tank I've made my own sort of uh, battle damage. I simply used um, a Citadel hand drill and drew little like puncture marks where the, the tank has taken some uh, some bullet shots. And also use a hobby knife to basically cut out some indents. You can see at the bottom there of the hull as it's hit some pretty hard obstacles. Bring these to life is really simple. Just get a very detailed brush, a little bit of lead belcher, almost uh, wiped off to a dry brush standard. And basically give it sort of that... Uh, that look as though some of the, um, the the actual metal of the tank has been exposed by the, the bullet wound. So depending if you've done this or not, it's up to you. Uh, but just go through and call out those little bullet wounds uh, with some lead belcher. Right, so a great piece of detail now is on the turret uh, with the vision lenses where the commander can see the battlefield. Um, basically they're pieces of glass. And, and the way I paint glass is basically use a base layer um, of a Latoc blue. Um, so go over all of the vision ports very carefully with your detailed brush um, to show them there. I think a key piece to show it's a piece of glass is actually as I'm picking out there, it's actually the piece of glass sort of comes out of the, the housing. So it's like a very tiny lip of it. You need to basically go for and make sure that those parts are painted uh, to show it's a piece of glass. Right, so next using uh, Baharov blue, I basically use the, the detail brush once again to try and bring to life the fact that it is actually a piece of glass. So what I'm doing here is painting uh, the left side of the lens, almost at the top of the lens, as though some light's reflecting off the glass. I think one thing to keep in mind potentially is to uh, to be consistent when we're applying it. So across all of them, actually, you sort of um, put on the same area. So maybe that shows, I don't know, the sun's reflecting off the sun, off the lenses in a certain way. And to finish this work off, I now use um, 
contrasts arithmetic blue, don't try and say that too fast, um, to sort of uh, wash and sort of combine the, um, the two paints together. It does work quite well, I think. Uh, it does look quite nice once it's done. But I wouldn't say I'm an expert at painting glass. It's actually quite challenging. Do have a go. It's definitely worth the, the effort because um, this little piece of detail really does make the, the, the turret stand out. So have a go. Before I forget on this part, I actually use uh, Newland oil on my detail brush uh, to basically really sort of make the, uh, the edges of the glass pop. So where the glass actually protrudes out of the, um, the frame, I just carefully pick out with a tiny amount of Newland oil uh, to sort of give it a better definition there. So do try and do that because uh, it does make it look uh, very, very sharp. Right, so on to the uh, Sponson weapons. I actually keep these really straightforward. Um, I basically do the body of the weapon in Abaddon Black and pick out all the uh, metallic pieces such as the barrel, the ejection port on uh, the bolter with lead belcher. I then do basically the edges uh, with Dawnstone and of course give them a wash with Nulon oil. As I said, I keep these very simple. All aside, all aside for the, the plasma cannon, if you use that, it's got some cabling. I do that in a green, a red, and a blue for the cables. Um, you can see here the uh, the fuel jerrys. Basically, I just use our uh, wire green and our uh, Newland oil to paint those. And you can see there, I've used a bit, a bit of frame and some blue tech to paint those quite easily. And then, of course, once they're all dry, it's just a matter of um, attaching all the accessories. So I stuck on the uh, the fuel jerrys. I stick on the heavy stubber. Actually, for the sponson weapons, I don't actually glue them in place. Um, I simply use blue tack, which you can probably kind of see buried in there. I find it a very, very simple and effective way of keeping the uh, sponsored weapons in there. And the reason why they're not permanent is because when you play the tabletop game, you may want to change your layout depending on the opponent you're playing against. It's a really simple way of keeping them in place there. Right, so then the transfers or decals. Obviously you remove these uh, from the backing paper using a hobby knife and you can see I'm simply cutting them away. Then you soak it in clean water for 15 to 20 seconds, holding onto the backing paper with your tweezers. Make sure it's no more than about 20 seconds any longer. You run the risk of basically the decal floating off the board or the backing paper and being lost into your, uh, your pot of water. So actually prior to uh, placing it down, I actually uh, put down some micro sets by Micro Scale Industries. And what that helps you to do is really soften the decal, allow it to be moved around quite easily. I then spend the next probably minute or so just positioning uh, the decal where I want it to be. And what I was trying to go for here is marrying up uh, the left, or correction, the right tip of the, the diamond with that stud in the middle or that bolt in the middle. Just a matter of just pushing it around. You do have a fair bit of time here because it's not dry. And just gently pushing uh, the decal into place. And once it's in place, um, you want it to dry. So uh, what you can do there is simply use uh, your brush to remove any excess fluid which is lying around. And then either using uh, some kitchen towelette um, or maybe some cotton wool sticks. You can help to remove some of the, the excess fluid, but be very gentle at this stage. So now with all the decals uh, dry, I try to show here that actually um, it's quite obvious that they're decals. Um, you can see the little shine coming off, particularly the, uh, the 317 at the top there of the turret. So now I use Microsol, uh, also by Micro Scale Industries. Um, and what this does is really softens um, the decals and what it ends up doing is helping it to sort of really get ingrained into the surface of the model um, so use micro set first follow it up with micro sole to give it that embedded look right so all finished all done uh, hopefully you agree it's a paint job and um, an effort that'll make the machine gods quite happy so it's a very straightforward uh, paint job I've obviously gone for no camouflage I have done camouflage schemes before uh, on World War II uh, tank models. However, without um, access to an airbrush, I've just adopted um, a single uh, color scheme.
This allows you to uh, basically focus your efforts more so on the weathering of the tank, getting basically the details perfect. If Mechanicus Grey isn't your thing, uh, you could of course use the other sprays, uh, Xandri Dust, Death Guard Green, or maybe Grey Seer from Games Workshop. Of course, you could go outside of Games Workshop to other businesses and try their colours as well. Um, and as I mentioned at some point during the video, the heavy stubber and also the fuel jerrys come from the accessories frame, which comes with a basilisk kit. It can actually also be purchased separately from Games Workshop for about £10. And lastly, the main cannon, uh, main weapon system, is it something you can buy? I've made that myself for the Annihilator Twin Last Cannon. So if you've liked this video um, and want to see more about uh, assembling, painting and playing Astro Militarum Imperial Guard in the world of 40k, then please like and subscribe. I will then release videos about how to make 